we definitely had uh, fun at the thrift store, and I know a new way of making money now, and that's showing up at the thrift store with the truck. <laughs> I guess some people would consider these like serving trays, I would believe sometimes they would be used for. I know in college we used to use them for different things. I, I'm influenced by a lot of different medias of, mediums of art. Musicians make an album and it may have a theme and that theme may uh, reoccur in uh, two or three albums later like Blueprint Part 5 or something like that. Or also like uh, directors and movie directors try to, they have to cast members, they have to create environments and, and, and settings uh, along with telling the story. And that helps, that helps create the full picture, I believe. Uh, and also it's kind of like comedians, they have to go and travel to different places and do shows. Sometimes they have to do different materials, they may do eight sets a night and by the end of the night they may be doing totally different material because it's just something that has developed during the time and being in that space so I like to try to carry that uh, work work method and work ethic in, in, within my artwork as well. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why I start working on Collage One is because uh, I naturally I'm naturally a recessive artist like I could t I mean t I take away stuff so I could take away like I can work a stall and make a sculpture out of it like that but then when it comes to like adding and building out in three dimensions even in sculpture it was hard for me to kind of like get wrap my head around it so originally I started trying to work with collage, which helped kind of like um, fix my brain to be able to kind of like start working out like that. Similar to like how um, DJs and um, musicians work where you can lay down a track, uh, take a little bit of Miles Davis, put a little from DMX in there and then like you know have a whole different song I try to do the same thing with uh, the artwork where um, I'll pull certain things certain images um, I use different materials and lay those things on top of each other and layer it um, like a and 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 I, and I go back to say kind of like a layered cake, and that's why I could uh, refer to my work as a layered cake. Is because like not only are there multiple layers of like materials of paint that's laid on top of each other and edited to be one piece, the ideas and the uh, thoughts and the uh, references are also very layered. that's like ridiculous like I probably couldn't sleep in that bed actually I slept in that bedroom before um, and it's weird <laughs> <laughs> he had a doll bedroom she worked in uh, retail for a while she was a uh, display manager so she did a lot of window installations and um, using mannequins and like uh, all different types of floral arrangements. My parents, both of my parents, definitely influenced my art. Um, like my father, he um, always had a camera, so I, I know that's where my photogenic side comes from. And I use photographs a lot in my work too, or source materials from photographs that I take. The stencils that I use, come from the photographs and uh, it, it also allows me to kind of like 
can use a print making method too because I can reuse these stencils and like print out a whole lot of uh, different additions almost, but not so much additions because you know I just I just need to use the image more than once. Are you pulling from uh, current events, or are um, you getting images from the internet? I get I I use it all. Like I use I use pictures from the internet. I use pictures from Google uh, Maps. I use I use photos that I use. I collage a lot of those images together and break them apart and put them like uh, also. Uh, I try to take what's important, you know, the things that I feel like are important and capture those, finding a little piece of it and then reintroducing it in the different context of, you know, uh, you know, that's, that's the way I try to approach the work as well. Like a little piece, something somebody else may be able to make it better than me. So why would I recreate it? But then I can maybe take what they maybe had or I even discard it and use it in a different way to kind of like tell a different story. All of these pieces relate to the title, Riots and Rallies, Parades and Protests. And each of the words in the title have their own definitions and they're almost like a Venn diagram the way they overlap and yet are different. Yeah. Uh, and you're dealing with the public in these photo, in these artworks, mm -hmm. crowds of people. And as we know, people act very differently in crowds than they do as individuals. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Definitely, like, uh, I'm trying to capture that herd mentality, uh, that pack mentality. Like, it's, uh, it's definitely us going back to kind of like our animal, nature people are similar as far as like you know especially when you're getting riled up you get uh you get these people to have some type of uh thing to go against or claim as the as the other um also kind of like you know it's tribal uh schools and, and and football teams and stuff like that they get their team wants to their their fans wants to kick the other fans ass <laughs> when when it's finally brought together in a full room like this, you can see the cohesiveness of it. A lot of times, I have an intention, or, or at least certain intentions with certain things that I do lay down. Like, it may not be the, the strokes and all of that other type of stuff. It, it's natural. but Improvisational. Yeah, improv, uh, happenstance, uh, happy accidents, you know. I love that type of stuff, but then at the same time, and I don't want to know what the work is gonna look like when I'm finished. I don't wanna know. I'll know when I get there, and I and I usually do, you know, but um, it is a process of building and destroying, building, destroying, taking away, adding, laying, laying things on top of each other, laying ideas on top of each other, covering those ideas, and then having some of it exposed through the layers. Um, your murals are are very much like these works, and you know murals have a place in the public, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, do you distinguish between the works that are for a gallery and works that are improvised for a mural that's five stories high? I usually do. Um, I, I try. Uh, I know when when I'm dealing with public art pieces, I'm having to deal with the community and other people are involved. So it is a a give and a take when I'm working with that type of stuff, which I don't have a problem with because. Um, that gives me an outlet or a place where I I know that the public also has access to my work. And I think that that's a blessing. My, one of my professor's sculpture is right around the corner from where I live. And now I have two murals that are like right there around here. So I feel like I'm just trying to do the same thing that he did too, 
as far as like have access to artwork because even as a child that's what influenced me especially growing up in Dallas uh, Dallas Texas North Point Mall is a fucking museum I mean it's it's the Nashers curate the artwork and the sculptures that's inside this museum the the actual mall itself is a, a piece of artwork um, it is like and I remember growing up as a child like seeing these huge like two-story sculptures in the middle of the mall you know and so um, it was open to the public oh yeah I mean it's a it's a real mall it's a like a mall that has like you know all of your mall stores in it but throughout the entire mall and this mall is like it's huge it's a huge mall so but then in the middle of different like intersections they have just the baddest fucking art that exists like <laughs> you know? thank you Texas. sculptures oh uh, yeah yeah something, right? oh yeah 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 dallas definitely is on point when it comes like that type of stuff like oh yeah oh yeah but i mean it influenced my the type of work i like it's the reason why originally i was a minimalist painter and it's funny like you that I'm, yeah you yeah yeah, a minimalist painter? <laughs> yeah i mean that's what i when it? i was at aca that's all i was trying to do and stuff like that so um but it was because of my influence from you know like ellsworth kelly is still one of my favorite artists to this day robert Irwin is another artist that is a minimalist but i fuck him up like he's one of the, my favorite artists. So, uh, Donald Judd, who was talking about... His birthday was yesterday. Yeah, I saw that you uh, told me that. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And, uh, and all of them aren't accessible, though, because I know some, one, the five-story one is at a pool at this apartment complex, but it's cool because you can see it from the road uh, across the tracks over at the goat farm. And um, different areas and angles, you can still see it from different places, I mean, it's which is kind of cool. Exactly, you know, which I like too. Like, you know, I, it's, it's not like a secret location, but it would be cool to do a mural at a secret location. But And then I've done some in like, um, like for CBRE at their office or Axis. And so only the people that work there, but then that's cool because the people that work there get to hopefully, they ho hopefully they think my artwork is cool. And they get to see cool artwork every day, you know. And because of the way I layer my stuff, hopefully every time they go past, they'll find certain new little things that they didn't see. Like I put a, I put a, a MF Doom shout out to uh, on one of my murals, and um, and you know people loved it. 